Genesis chapter number 12. <clears throat> we'll begin reading verse number 1. The Bible says, Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them, him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We are so blessed tonight. Amen. Lord, we need you so much tonight. And God, we just thank you for being our God. Thank you for not only being our God, but our friend. Thank you for being our shepherd. Thank you, Lord, for being our Lord. Thank you for being a present help in time of need. Now, Lord, as we come to you in prayer tonight, we thank you for the good singing. Thank you for the good fellowship we had before service. Thank you for the reading of the Word of God. Lord, we realize most people in America has never even read any portion from the Word of God. We realize there are places across the world that don't have the Word of God. Lord, we are a blessed people tonight. Now, Father, I realize your people have labored this week in this old wicked world, and they've had to contend with the flesh, and they've had to contend with the, the world and the devil. And, Lord, they find themselves in the house of God tonight. God, I pray you'd refresh them. I pray that you would kindle a fire within them, and I pray that you would bless them abundantly. I do pray if there be any amongst us tonight, unsaved, lost without Christ, that tonight would be the night of their salvation. Lord, I pray for Miss Mary. I pray you'd touch her. Oh, Lord, we know that you're the great physician, and God, we pray you'd bear your mighty arms, and God, you would touch your servant. God, I pray not only for her, I pray for Brother Sherman, I pray for others that are sick. I pray for those that are traveling. Lord, I pray that, God, you'd meet every need of every one of your children. Now, Father, I pray for the next few minutes you'd use this unworthy vessel. and God, you would stir us. You would challenge us. You would convict us. And, God, you would help us to leave out here seeking your face and striving to be holy. Now, God, have your will and way. We'll bless you for it. For it's in Jesus' wonderful and holy name we pray. Amen and amen. I want you to notice a few things about these verses. I'll get to the thought tonight. I want you to notice, first of all, the personal call of Abram. We find in verse number 1, Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto land that I will show thee. I don't know why the Lord chose to get Abram to leave his homeland, to go to a land that he know, knew as not, uh, other than the fact that God wanted Abram uh, to step out on faith. Uh, and can I say, uh, 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 there is a specific call from God uh, on an individual's life to serve him in a specific manner. There is a general call for everybody to be saved, uh, for whosoever will, let him come and drink of the water of life freely. Uh, and then once people are saved, everybody that is saved uh, is called of God to serve the Lord. Uh, we're called of God to be a light uh, to this dark world. We're called of God uh, uh, to take the word of God to people that don't know God uh, and introduce them to the fact there is a holy, righteous loving God that wants to redeem them and save them from their sins. Uh, but here we find a specific personal call from Almighty God to a fellow by the name of Abram that we find later becomes Abraham. We not only find uh, the personal call of Abram, I want you to notice the promise concerning Abram. Look in verse number 2. 
And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing, and I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee. Now that's a promise from God to Abram. And here tonight, uh, what is going on in the Middle East uh, is nothing new. Uh, ever since God chose uh, uh, the Jews to be his own uh, uh, personal people, his chosen people, uh, everybody else in that region has had a jealous bug. Uh, they have hated Israel. Uh, that, this is not the only time Israel's been at war. Uh, uh, there have been other times uh, they have tried to annihilate, annihilate Israel from the face of the earth. Uh, but I've got news for you. They'll never do it. That's still God's people. Uh, uh, but listen, God promised Abraham he'd make of him a great nation uh, and that all the families of the earth would be blessed uh, because of Abram. Uh, can I tell you, uh, if it wouldn't have been for Abram on down through the years, uh, there wouldn't have been a fellow, uh, or a lady by the name of Mary uh, who God wouldn't have chose uh, uh, to be the earthen vessel that he'd step out of glory and walk in into her virgin womb and come forth uh, and can I say every nation's been blessed because Jesus Christ came uh, what a blessing tonight uh, where old Gentile dogs had no right to God uh, but God made a way uh, where we could be saved uh, and because we trusted in Christ uh, hey the very promises of Abraham uh, uh, came on down to you and I uh, we are blessed tonight uh, had not Abraham stepped out on faith uh, had not Moses stepped out on faith uh, had not people in the Bible stepped out on faith uh, God might have wiped this uh, this uh, uh, world off uh, uh, years ago there might have been no hope for us uh, but we have hope tonight in Jesus Christ and through the promises of Abram he went on to promise that he'd bless them that blessed her and curse them that cursed thee and can I say tonight I've always been for Israel don't want to be against Israel. I want the blessings of God on my life. And I'm for Israel tonight. You say, what about all those other people? I hate there are innocent people over there that are suffering. But hey, listen, they're, they're not as innocent as you think. Mm. I read today, and by the way, our universities in this land are rising up a bunch of heathen that are uh, uh, supporting the terrorists over there. But I read today that they not only beheaded women and children and babies and people, they cut the hearts out of them. That's the kind of people that our universities and even some of our politicians are heralding. That's the people that Joe Biden is telling Israel not to annihilate. I'm here to tell you, Israel's always had a thought. Uh, you take one of ours, we're taking a thousand of yours. Uh, Israel has always realized everybody's been against them. Uh, and Israel uh, knows something about what we call Jewish lightning. I'm for Israel. It wouldn't upset me if Israel annihilated them all. Amen. Mm. Amen. I'm standing with Israel. I don't care what the White House does. I don't care what the governor's mansion does. I don't care what... I'm standing with Israel. Because I believe the Bible. Yeah. I didn't mean to get off on all that, but I did. We see the personal call of Abram. We see the promise concerning Abram. But notice the prophetic charge to Abram. Look again in verse number 3. He said, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. That was a prophecy. And can I say, we have. When it comes down to it, and in verse number 4 we find Abram does depart. When it came down to it, Abram, after he heard from God, had to make a choice. And tonight you and I have to make a choice. Are we going to believe what the Bible says? Are we going to embrace the message of God or are we just going to stay in our own mundane state? Yeah. Amen. But Abram had to get up. He had to get out. And he had to get on with what God said. And tonight we need to get up from our modes of complacency. Yeah. We have to not only get up, we got to get out. And then we've got to get on with what God called us to do. 
So many times we've got it in our mindset, it's the preacher's job, or it's the deacon's job, or it's the Sunday school teacher's job. It's all of our jobs Amen. to be a light to this world. And so many times we've got it in our mindset, well, God will reach them. Who do you think God chooses to reach people? People. Huh? Now, I, I don't think I'll have any problem standing here saying we are not Calvinist. We don't believe God predestinated some people to die and go to hell, and he predestinated some people to go to heaven. We don't believe that doctrine. But if we're not a light, we are practical Calvinist. Because we just think someday they're going to wake up and say, I need to be saved. It doesn't happen that way. Somebody has to tell them. Amen. Somebody has to be a witness to them and a light to them. And are we going to let the Jehovah's Witnesses do it? They don't know God. We're going to let the charismatics do it? They don't know God. They've got a different spirit. They use a different Bible. They have different doctrines they embrace. They, don't, they, they have false doctrine. They don't have the doctrines of God. Who's going to do it? Boy, it's got real quiet in here tonight. We have been appointed of God to impact our Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the other most parts of the world. But Abram had to make a conscious choice. This is what I want to preach on tonight. You're going to make a choice how much you're going to serve God. You're going to make a choice on how far you're going to go. And I want to preach on that. How far are you going to go? Hmm? How far are you going to go? Now, Brother Aiden, I ask you, how far are you going to go? Now, you can't look at Caleb and say, well, how far is Caleb going to go? Well, that's his choice. How far are you going to go? And Colton, how far are you going to go? Well, you can't look to Bella and say, well, I'll wait and see what Bella's going to do. No, how far are you going to go? Every one of us have to answer that question. Right. How far are we going to go? Now, the Bible's full of all kinds of testimonies of people that went with God, and there's a bunch of people who didn't go as far yeah. as they could have with God. Hmm? How far are you going to go? Hmm? Hmm? I say tonight that Abraham went as far as his faith had led him. He went as far as his faith led him. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 8, By faith Abraham, when he was called to go out to a place which he should after receive for an inheritance. By the way, all that land over there they're fighting over is Israel's. Including the Gaza Strip. And every time they talk about letting the Palestines become a nation and have land over there, do you know what they're telling the Jews to give up? The Holy Land. The temple. All the places where Jesus trod. All the places that we hold dear. Mount Calvary, Gethsemane, Mount Sinai. Hey, the Galilean Sea. All those places they're saying, let the Palestinians have that. Hmm? That would be like us sitting here in Kentucky and they say, well, let's let Massachusetts have half of Kentucky. Them Yankees don't get any of it. Yeah. Amen. Uh, Amen. We find that Abram mm, went out to a place that he should after receive for an inheritance. He obeyed. And he went out not knowing whither he went. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob. The heirs with him of the same promise. How far did he go? He went as far as his faith took him. Uh, he just kept following God. Listen, uh, Abraham wasn't perfect. Uh, neither was anybody else in the Bible except the Lord Jesus. Uh, but even, even though uh, uh, he failed God along the way, he still trusted by faith and he went as far as his faith took him. Uh, hey, so then faith Faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Let me ask you, uh, where's your faith at tonight? Uh, how far are you willing to go? Uh, you willing to trust God for another step? Uh, trust God for another mile? Uh, trust God for another day? Uh, hey, will you just let faith guide you as far as you can go? 
It's in order. Let your faith lead you. You just got to keep obeying God. Amen. Hmm? We don't walk by sight. We walk by faith. But unfortunately, a lot of Christians, Brother Adrian, have sat down because they can't see. They only go as far as they can see. Hmm? Amen. Uh, and it amazes me. I just made this statement a few times. We, we have enough faith for God to take us to heaven before Him take us across the street. God help us. Abraham went as far as his faith led him. Can I say that Elisha went as far as he could follow? Hmm? You know the story I preached on Elisha not long ago. But in 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 2, And Elijah said unto Elisha, Tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord hath sent me to Bethel. And Elisha said unto him, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel. You know the story. Elijah and Elisha was in Gilgal. All the sons of the prophets and even Elisha knew the day was coming when God was taking Elijah from him. And uh, Elijah looks at Elisha while they're in Gilgal and says, i got to go to Bethel. You just tarry here. Uh, Elisha said, No, uh, I, as thy soul liveth, uh, my soul liveth, uh, I'm going where you're going. Uh, hey, he just followed. Uh, hey, they got down there to Bethel and then he said, We're going to Jericho. We're going to Jordan. Hey, uh, each time he tells him to tarry, you know, uh, he said, I'm following you. Uh, hey, Elisha went uh, as far as he could follow. Uh, uh, listen, uh, uh, you and I, uh, we've got a good shepherd, a great shepherd, and a chief shepherd. Uh, we need to follow him. Uh, he'll never lead us astray. Uh, we need to go as far as we can follow, my dear friends. Uh, can I say that Elisha refused to quit on the man of God? He just followed Elijah. That was his man of God. Amen. Go study it. Elisha just doing what he was uh, did all the time. He's out there plowing the field. Elijah comes by, just throws his mantle on him. Uh, and Elisha uh, uh, left all he ever known to follow the man of God. And he was with the man of God. Uh, and when the man of God uh, was about to be taken, he said, you just, he said, no, I'm following the man of God. He didn't quit the man of God. Amen. You know what happens, Brother Bob? We get used to listening to the man of God. The man of God's not as important as he once was. Not to Elisha. He didn't quit on the man of God. I heard one of our missionaries say this this week. It kind of blessed me. Probably going to make somebody mad tonight. But Brother Don Chitty. How many of you remember Brother Chitty? He came a few years ago. But Don Chitty, it was one of the most highly decorated soldiers from Vietnam. He don't talk about it. He's a Marine, and he won every medal, one medal shy of what Audie Murphy did in World War II. And Don Chitty came home from the war, and he was just, a, by his own testimony, just a drunk. Uh, 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 but hey, somebody told him about Jesus. Uh, and he got saved. Uh, and God called him to preach. Uh, and uh, hey, uh, 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 he went out there to the Navajo Indians. He didn't even go on debitation. He just went out there uh, and uh, began winning them uh, Navajo Indians. Lived out of his car, him and his wife, for a couple months till they could afford to buy a little camper. Uh, he's only been out there going on almost 50 years. Uh, and he's wanted uh, all kinds kinds of those Indians out there uh, uh, in New Mexico built a great work, got a, a Christian school and a Bible college and doing great things. Uh, uh, Brother Chitty said this this week. Uh, he said the man of God knows more accidentally uh, than most people know on purpose. Uh, uh, it'd be good for us to learn that sometimes. Uh, hey, uh, he's more than just your good old buddy. Uh, he's more than just the preacher. Uh, he's God's man. Uh, and you ought to be willing to not Quit on God's man. Uh, hey, Elisha went as far as he could follow. Uh, say, why didn't he follow him more? Because God didn't give him a reservation on the chariot of fire. Uh, can I say he went as far as he could follow? He didn't quit on the man of God. Can I say this? He didn't quit on the methods he was taught. Let me help you with something. It's been a while since I've said this, but I've been saying this for 30 years. By the way, I'm mad at Brother Greg Neal. 
I am. He's my friend by my daddy. He invited me up on the platform last night and wanted me to pray. I don't know, 750,000 people sitting there. He says, Brother Doug's my friend. He said, he's another man that's been faithful for decades. I got to think, he just called me old. <laughs> I went back, I sat down next to Brother Paul Hill. I said, I, I don't know about that decades comment. That makes me feel old. But can I say, we live in a day and age where people are looking for something different. I've been saying this for 30 years. If it's new, it's not true. And if it's true, it's not new. You better be careful from uh, some of this new philosophy and new teaching and some of this new preaching that's coming out. Uh, you better stick with the methods that you've been taught. Uh, can I say, uh, uh, walk in the old paths. That's the good way. Uh, you'll find rest for your soul. Uh, I don't need anything new. Uh, uh, listen, a uh, few years ago, uh, Independent Baptist jumped all over that Rick Warren junk, 40 days of purpose. Uh, I don't need 40 days of purpose. Uh, I need purpose every day and I get that from the Bible. Uh, I don't get that from some philosophy, some humanistic thought. Uh, I need what God says. Uh, what a blessing for have whatsoever the Lord says. Uh, when God says it, that settles it. Uh, and friends, you've been taught the Bible. Uh, you've been taught, taught the truths of the Bible. Uh, don't ever question the Bible. Uh, don't ever question your Baptist distinctives. Uh, don't ever back up. Uh, on the methods you've been taught, they still work. Hallelujah. Am I telling the truth, sis? Did you not tell me at the hospital the other day that you all wish you'd have found this church years ago that everybody needs this kind of preaching? Didn't you say that? Huh? You know why she said that? Because it works. Old-fashioned preaching, old-fashioned singing, old-fashioned worship, old-fashioned living will bring rest and peace and help to your soul. Amen. All newfangled stuff does is ease your conscience for a little bit. It won't help you in the midnight hour. When you need to hear from heaven, that junk won't help you. But I'll tell you what will help you. That stuff God's anointed and had his hand on. Elisha didn't quit on the methods he was taught. Listen, there are people shifting gears all over. And this recovering fundamentalism has, is a cancer. Yeah. Brother Neil, I didn't know till I got down there, they can't live stream anymore because of the attack that they're under from a lot of these crowds uh, that are constantly attacking all their social media and all their stuff. And their people are constantly under attack because they have the audacity of sticking with the old stuff. Yeah. But listen to this thought. People do not change their position. They change their direction. I'm not changing directions. There is a holy highway that leads towards heaven. Are you listening? Broads the way that leads to destruction. Narrows that way that leads home, friend. And I'm here to tell you, God's never backed up on anything. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And we're not to change direction. He is the way, the truth, and the life. We're to follow Him. Amen. Elisha went as far as he could follow. He didn't quit on the man of God. He didn't quit on the methods he was taught. And he didn't quit on the mantle that befell him. When Elijah was taken away... Elisha picked up the mantle and carried on in the same vein. Can I say this? Had he fallen, the mantle would have never fallen to him. It's not time to shift and change and all that. I want the mantle. I want the touch. I want the presence. I want the double portion of God on my life and on this church. And if we change directions, we'll never have that. Mm. And I say Abraham went as far as his faith led him. Elisha went as far as he could follow. But listen to me tonight. The prodigal son went as far as his food supply. 
The Bible says in Luke 15, verse 15, And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into the fields to feed swine. And he would have feigned have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. You remember the prodigal son, he asked for the portion of the inheritance that was his. If you study Jewish law, everything went to the eldest son, the firstborn son. The younger son really had no right to anything. And he didn't even want to wait till the father died to get it. Kind of like a lot of young people today. I saw something today where this young uh, lady was in college and was having a meltdown because uh, her parents had the audacity to tell her to get a job. What's she going to college for? You're going to work all your life, young people. I'm proud of some of our young people. They start out young. Bella's had a job for a couple years. She never gave me a dollar, but she's got a job. Uh, Miss Olivia, she's Miss Chick-fil-A back there, huh? Miss Lexi works. Some of these young people, as soon as they get of age, they get a job. That's good training, huh? That's not going to hurt them. That's going to help them, and it's going to help you, Mom and Dad. You don't have to keep giving them money to put in a gas tank. Are you listening? Uh, young people, listen. Xander, you ain't going to like this. You're going to work 40, 50 years of your life unless Jesus comes. You better be praying he comes, all right? <laughs> you got to work. I know work is a four-letter word. Nobody likes that word. The Bible says you don't work, you, shouldn't, you don't eat. Hmm? Well, this young man didn't even wait for his dad, but the father, out of the kindness of his heart, gave him, gave him an inheritance. And not many days after, he went for the big city, uh, and he wasted it on riotous living. He had himself a big time till the food supply ran out. And then he wanted to eat what swine eat. How many of you have ever been around swine when they feed them the slop? Kids Google it, because I mean, it's only old people. Oh, and you've seen some hogs fed? It's nasty, isn't it? Uh, I want to tell you something. Slop is Chinese food. That's all I can say. That's some nasty stuff. I want to say, I've been hungry, but I've never been that hungry. He says, what, preacher, eat Chinese food or slop? Both. Uh, but this boy was so hungry. you got to imagine, you got to understand, the worst place a Jewish boy could ever be is in a field with swine. And then what to eat what they eat? See, he went as far as the food supply led him. Then his life was a mess. Huh? Let me help you with something. You've got a choice to make. You can go after all the shiny things of the world, but they tend to lose their luster very quickly. It's always a wonderful idea to buy a new car till about that third payment. Yeah. Amen. Say, what in the world was I thinking? Hmm. Huh? Let me help you with something. Everything has a cost. Yeah. Amen, Pastor. Not everything is wicked, but everything has a cost. But the wages of sin is death. Yeah. Hmm. He went as far as the food supply. And aren't you glad in God's loving kindness let that boy come to himself and he realized even the servants at his father's house had it better than he had in that, in that hog pen. I want to tell you, young person, older person, middle-aged person, you don't want to end up in a hog pen. It'd be better just stay at the father's house. Hmm? This world has nothing for the child of God. Matter of fact, the Bible says that he that loves the world is at enmity with God, for the world is the enemy of God. And you will not be blessed in the world. No, you go out there till the food supply runs out. 
I thought about this. Peter went as far as he could until fear arose. Matthew chapter 14, verse 29. You remember the story? The disciples are out on the seas, a big storm, and Jesus comes walking by. They thought he was a ghost. And Peter said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me to come. The Bible says in verse 29 of Matthew 14, and he said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. Boy, it'd be a wonderful story if it stops in verse 29. Yeah. Amen. Now listen, kudos to Peter. He had enough faith to get out of the boat. Yeah. Amen. Kudos to Peter. As long as he had his eyes on Jesus, he's walking on water. None of us have done that. But verse 30 happens. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid, and he began to sink. He cried, Lord, save me. Hmm? Can I say, Peter went as far as he could until fear rose. If you're not careful, you get to looking around, fear starts to well up. Tonight, if you watch enough news, you'll get fearful. Amen. News have you so afraid you want to wear a mask everywhere because you're going to die if you breathe. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Uh, by the way, did you see what the Supreme Court did? They said you could sue those vaccine makers and they've taken one of them off the market. Hmm? But it wasn't that long ago, the news told you if you got a vaccine, you'd never get the virus. Liar, liar, pants on fire. You not only could get the virus, you could get a whole lot of other things. Huh? Yeah, even death. Huh? It's no accident a lot of these young people, they mandated to get the virus to go back to school are having heart conditions today. What I'm saying, you get to looking around at this world and get to listening to this world and everything, you'll get afraid. You better keep your eyes on Jesus. Mm, you just might end up walking on some water. Hmm? The prodigal son went as far as his food supply. Peter went as far as he could until fear rose. How far are you going to go? Well, can I say this? The apostle Paul went as far as the finish line. 2 Timothy 4 verse 6 says, For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love is appearing. Paul made it to the finish line. How far are you going to go? Hmm? Well, I, I, I sure want to finish right. right. Yeah. Hmm? Can I say this? The Lord Jesus went a little further. Yeah. Matthew 26, 39, and he went a little further. He fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. Can I say Jesus went from Gethsemane to Golgotha to the grave to the garden when he rose and then to a gathering, he appeared unto his disciples, and then he appeared to some 500 people. And can I say, then he went to glory. He just went a little farther. Can I say, and then he's coming back. What a blessing, huh? Uh, and I have to say this. I mean, you've been here a while, and know where I'm going with this, but when Jesus prayed for the cup to pass from him, he wasn't praying not to go to Calvary. All these commentators, his preachers, said, well, Jesus was a man, was praying not to go to Calvary. Hogwash, that's why he came into the world. He was the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. He wasn't praying not to go to Calvary. You go back and you study it. His sweat becomes his great drops of blood. You study the 
uh, the life of Jesus and during his earthly ministry, how many times when his disciples were sleeping in the middle of the night, he went to the mountain to pray. You study uh, how many times he's fasting, how many times he doesn't take time to eat because he's uh, feeding the multitudes and he's healing the sick and he's constantly uh, under a strain. Uh, and my dear friends, when he gets to, Gal Gal or gets to Gethsemane, uh, 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 he begins to hemorrhage uh, there in the garden because the bulls of Bashan have come to attack him uh, as prophet aside in Psalm 22. Uh, listen to me. Satan tried to kill him in the garden. Uh, if he could have killed him in the garden, Jesus wouldn't have been God. Uh, the Bible wouldn't have been true. Uh, hey, and the Lord was asking for that cup to pass from him. Uh, Jesus wasn't asking uh, not to go to the cross. He was asking for the strength to make it to the cross, my dear friends. Uh, what he was praying would pass was death. He wouldn't die there. But he died to fulfill the scriptures. He said, Preacher, you really mean that? Why do you think angels came and ministered unto him? Yeah. To give him that strength. Yeah. Now, here's the great contention how far are you going to go? He prayed three times. All three times, he told his inner circle Peter, James, and John. I'm not talking about Thomas, I'm not talking about Judas. The one that betrayed him. I'm not talking about the weak disciple. I'm talking about the sons of thunder and Peter. Right. He said, watch. Tarry here and watch with me. And Brother Ron, I believe with all my heart, had they not fallen asleep on the job, God would have used them to minister to him and wouldn't have had to send angels. How many times does God have to send somebody to do our job? Because yeah. we've fallen asleep because we wouldn't go farther. Hmm? God help us to go farther. Jesus went farther. Is it not he our example? Are we not called Christian because we're to be Christ-like? Right. Is he not the measuring stick? We don't measure ourselves to each other. We measure ourselves to Christ. Uh, he's the one we ought to shoot for. He's the one we ought to pattern our lives after. Now, we will fall short of the grace of God, but we ought to not strive to fall short. Uh, we ought to strive to go as far as we can go. And Jesus went a little further. We ought to go a little further. Hmm. It amazes me that until you're tested, you don't know how strong you are. <coughs> Some of you served in the military. Some of you have children that serve in the military. Uh, talk to Brother Clint. Mm, their boy, Special Forces. When they first go in the military, I don't know about submarine guys, but all the rest of them. Now, when they go in the military, first thing they do is they strip them down, they break them down. And then they build them back up. When they build them back up, they put things in them to make them go farther than they ever thought they could go. And can I say, when you got saved, you became a new creature in Christ Jesus. And He took up His abode in you. Your flesh hinders you, but that inner man can take you farther than you ever thought you could go. How many people have you seen get cancer, but they didn't crawl up in a ball and wait to die they just kept going for Jesus and brought glory to Jesus how many people have you seen suffer grave adversity but they just keep going when other people would have thrown in the towel long before that what propels them Jesus I need to go a little further now listen those that quit or those that stop those that just don't go very far they have the same traits in common. Can I say? They quit or stop because they fall in love with the world. Huh? In 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 10, right after Paul said, I finished my course, I've kept the faith, henceforth there's a crown of it. Right after that, Paul says this, For Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed unto Thessalonica. Hmm. Can I say, some quit because they fall in love with the world. It's easy to do. The devil's got all kinds of things to grab your attention. And if you're not careful, you'll give yourself more to those things than you will the Lord, and you won't go very far. How far are you going to go? Some quit stop or don't go very far because they fall in love with the world 
others because of false doctrine. The Bible says in 2 Peter 2.1, but there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them and bring unto themselves swift destruction. Can I say, there is so much false teaching and false doctrine. You better be real careful searching the internet for the answers. Hmm. Can I say... They might even call themselves independent Baptists. Did not Jesus warn in Matthew 7 about wolves in sheep's clothing? Some don't go very far because they embrace false doctrine. How far are you going to go? Some quit, stop, don't go very far because they don't want to forfeit anything. Can I say serving the Lord is going to cost you? It's going to cost you your pride. It's going to cost you time on your knees. I was reading Nehemiah chapter 1 the other day, and then Brother Scott preached on it Sunday night. Boy, it just jumped off the page. Nehemiah prayed for three months, but then he only worked 52 days. He prayed almost twice as much as he worked. Your prayer life is the lifeline of your Christianity. And if you're not careful, that's where the power comes from. You cut off your prayer life. And you won't go very far. See, you don't want to forfeit anything. How come we can be on the computer or on our phone for hours a day, but we can only pray for five minutes a day? How come we can read everything on the internet, but we can't read the Bible? Amen. That's why you don't go very far. That's why you're anemic. You can devote all the time in the world to your hobbies, but you don't devote any time to Jesus. You think coming to church is all the sacrifice you need to offer. Over in parts of Africa, they eat monkeys. They do. Matter of fact, if you ever watch that Indiana Jones movie, they're in that one thing where they get the bad dates. They bring a monkey over to them. Now, I could go into gross detail how they put the monkey on the table and they cut the skull off and they eat the brains of the monkey while the monkey's still alive, but I won't do that. Okay? Put ketchup on it? Yeah. You're a sick man. What did the monkey ever do to you? Uh, but how do they catch monkeys? Monkeys are pretty fast. Monkeys climb trees. Here's how to catch monkeys. Janet's over there. They eat monkeys. They eat monkeys, Janet. Not in Liberty where you're from, but in Africa they eat monkeys, okay? Yeah. But I guarantee you there's a Chinese restaurant down there, though. <laughs> but how, they, how do they catch the monkeys? Well, they have a special trap. And in the center of that trap, they don't use carrots or bananas or bait. They put something real shiny in it. And the curiosity of the monkey is drawn to that shiny object. And he'll reach in there and he'll grab that shiny object. And they'll come up and they'll get the monkey because he won't let go of the shiny object to get his hand free. Some of you got your hand on something shiny and you won't forfeit it. And it's causing you to be snared by the devil instead of going on for God. Hmm. You won't go very far hanging on to the world. Can I say this? Some quit or stop because they fail to recognize their own weakness. 
Hmm. Paul said, when I'm weak, then am I strong. You thinking you can handle it is the worst attitude you could ever have. Because outside the grace of God, we can't handle anything. For us to fail to realize how frail and weak we really are, we get lifted with pride. And God resists the proud, gives grace to the humble. And some don't go very far because they think they can handle it. Greatest thing you can ever do is throw up a white flag to heaven and say, Lord, I can't handle this, but I know you can. Lord, help me to rely on you more. Let me say this. Some don't go very far because they get so bitter and so angry because they will not forgive. They won't forgive themselves or they won't forgive somebody else. Peter's whole problem when he denied the Lord wasn't the judgment hand of God against him. Peter couldn't forgive himself. The Lord told him he was going to fail him and deny him. And Peter beat his chest. No, I'll, I'll go all the way to death with you. And before the next morning, he denied him three times, and all that kept ringing in Peter's ear, and then he couldn't forgive himself. Why do you think he didn't want to face the Lord? Huh? Why do you think when he went down there, when he heard Mary Magdalene, he ran down to the tomb to see if it was real? And then when Jesus is on the shore with, you know, fish and bread, and they're out there trying to fish, can't catch anything, John said, it's the Lord. Peter dives off the boat. Why? Because he didn't want to face him. Because he couldn't forgive himself. Do you find where Jesus ever rebukes Peter? He just asks him, Peter, do you love me? Yeah. And finally, Peter, after the third time, said, Lord, you know all things. You know I love you. And he just kept telling the same thing. Feed my sheep. Feed my lambs. Jesus had already forgiven him. But Peter couldn't forgive himself. And some of you beat yourself up all the time and you won't go very far doing that. And then others can't forgive somebody else. But yet we're admonished in the scriptures that God for Christ's sake forgives us. And we're to forgive others. And yet we want to hold grudges. We want to get bitter. You're not going to go very far. Let me ask you tonight, how far are you going to go? So, preacher, I don't know. Well, Abraham didn't know how far he was going. But he went as far as his faith would lead him. Elijah went as far as he could follow. Paul went as far as the finish line. Jesus just kept going a little farther. Why don't you make up your mind you're going to go as far as the Lord will let you go? You're going to put him first. You're going to follow him. You're going to put your faith in him. You're going all the way to the finish line by the grace of God. How far are you going to go? Now, this is not one of the messages where you come to the altar and you stand up and beat your chest and say, I'm going all the way. This is one of the messages you prove it out every day. How far are you going to go? How far are you going to go? Starts tonight. Make up your mind. I'm going as far as the Lord will lead me. Let's all stand. Brother Clint, come get a song of invitation. How far are you going to go? God help us. Go as far as we can go with the Lord. Folks are coming. They're picking out a song. Let's pray. Father, thank you for being a loving God full of tender mercy. Lord, thank you for your long suffering. God, help us determine in our hearts we want to, by the grace of God, live by faith. We're going to go as far as you'll lead us. And Lord, by your grace, we're going to the finish line. 
God, I pray for those that are embracing shiny objects. They're caught in, in the snares of the devil. Lord, they'll be recovered by you tonight. Lord, I pray for that one that has a forgiveness problem. Or there's something just can't forgive themselves. Lord, help them to see you've already forgiven them. And God, give them the grace to forgive themselves. Lord, for those that can't forgive others, God, give them the faith to believe you. And Lord, to be like you and learn to forgive others. Lord, do work in our hearts. Lord, this thing's winding down. We need some marathon Christians. We don't need flash in the pans or sprinters. We need folks that are in this thing for the long haul. That God might be glorified. That sinners might be saved. Help us, Lord, we pray in this invitation. In Jesus' name, amen. Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.